take their life, but they'll take yours too. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Iron Maiden songs. Number 10, Run to the Hills. As the first single off their critically acclaimed 1982 album, The Number of the Beast, Run to the Hills remains one of Iron Maiden's most highly ranked songs on various heavy metal lists. Touching on the conflicts between Native American tribes and European settlers, the Steve Harris penned track provides both sides' points of view and was the band's first song to be released with Bruce Dickinson on vocals. Number 9, Phantom of the Opera. Though the band's solid eponymous debut included notable songs like Prowler and Running Free, it's Phantom of the Opera that grabs us, especially because it was a precursor to decades of epic Steve Harris bass lines. While the band later derided the album's audio quality, the release was commercially successful. The seven-minute track was particularly notable for its progressive elements and its standing as a live staple. Number 8, Wrathchild. Featuring original vocalist Paul Diano on mic duties, Killer's track Wrathchild kicks off with one of Steve Harris's most recognizable bass lines. Despite the band's later lineup changes, this is usually the only track off this album that Iron Maiden still plays in concert. And this shouldn't come as any surprise, since the chorus and solo seem destined to be performed live. Seven, seventh son of a seventh son. Yeah, step, 1988's Seventh Son of a Seventh Son offered fans a slew of standout tracks, including Can I Play With Madness and The Evil That Men Do. But weighing in at over nine minutes and including a chilling intro, heart-pounding bass line, and haunting segment in between. to overlook the title track as one of Maiden's greatest. Number 6, Alexander the Great. Featuring synthesizers for the first time, 1986's Somewhere in Time presented a new sound which pleased some fans but disappointed others. Regardless, the album's track quality remained high, with the epic Caught Somewhere in Time the lush Stranger in a Strange Land and the infectious Wasted Years. The song that most represents the band's appeal is Alexander the Great. Referencing history in a unique way, this eight minute plus opus is truly a masterpiece. Number five. Number of the Beast. I left alone. My mind was blank. The 
title track to what is arguably the fan favorite from Iron Maiden's discography, The Number of the Beast introduced us to the vocal prowess of Bruce Dickinson. Given the song's subject matter, it drew considerable criticism, but it didn't hurt its success one bit, and it continues to be played live. Number four, The Trooper. Inspired by Lord Tennyson's poem, The Trooper, Peace of Mind's second single chronicles the charge of the Light Brigade at the Battle of Balaclava in 1854. Released after the first single, Flight of Icarus. The heavy metal tune is arguably the first Maiden song to successfully cross over into the mainstream. also showcased Adrian Smith's and Dave Murray's multi-layered guitars and Steve Harris's bass. Number three, Ace is High. Recounting the adventures of a British RAF pilot as he takes on the mighty German Luftwaffe during 1940's Battle of Britain, this Power Slave number features chilling lyrics and even more chilling riffs. They're a fittingly fast-paced onslaught of sound that display Maiden's signature multi-guitar sound. Aces High became an even bigger fan favorite when it served as the opening track to Maiden's critically acclaimed 1985 Live After Death release. Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Another Steve Harris written track off Power Slave, this 13 minute anthem was inspired by the Samuel Taylor Coleridge poem of the same name. The albatross begins with its vengeance. A terrible curse at first has begun. Though it's one of the longest in Maiden's repertoire, Harris actually wrote it in a relatively short time. To this day, it remains one of Dickinson's favorite songs to sing live. There goes the mariner, there comes the ship for the night. How could she sail with the wind and the sails and the tide? Number one, Hallowed Be Thy Name. Featuring two guitar solos, this single from The Number of the Beast is perennially named as one of, if not the greatest Maiden song ever. With lyrics about a prisoner's final moments before being hanged, and featuring Bruce Dickinson in his signature storytelling mode, it's also listed as one of the best heavy metal songs ever. Check it out for yourself. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite Iron Maiden song? Be sure to subscribe to WatchMoto.com for more entertaining top tens.